All right, advice. This is another show up in your 20s, in your 20s show, but it's also to collab with Music To My Ears blog. Let's and go. Music Man AJ, man. What's up, y'all? It's Music Man AJ. Tuning in. Shout out to my boy Pedro in the 20s podcast. Let's go. So as you guys have seen already on, the, on Instagram and all these social platforms, we've been collabing and doing these stuff, promoting each other, promoting our socials, promoting all the stuff we have together. Dude, we're going to take over. Yeah, we're definitely about to take over uh, Chicago, up and coming hip hop, music scene, journalism, like all of that stuff. We coming for it. Let's go. So do you want to talk about more? OK, so people already know you in Northeastern a lot in Chicago. Yeah. And uh, but I want to touch more topics on what really got you in the music scene. Like you're 29 years old. Yeah. Which you don't look like. You look like you're like 22, 23. <laughs> Thank you, bro. And on top of that, you're also half black and half Mexican. Yes, sir. So w- before like we actually get to like our plans and what we have actually still have to, you know, mm, what's the word? Uh, we still have to figure out like what we're really going to do. <clears throat> what's more about you, bro? Uh, well, I was born and raised on the south side of Chicago, the east side. Um I went to Kenwood. I graduated in Kenwood, from Kenwood in 2012. Uh, I got started doing music my, what was it, like, ooh, sophomore, junior year. I was already, like, doing promotions. Um, I was really good with promoting online. Um, the dance scene here was kind of what kicked that whole, like, spiral of entertainment for me to get involved in. Uh, shout out to the Future Kings. Um, shout out to the Juggernauts too. That was our like dance group back at Kenwood. That we had different members from different schools: Jones, King, Whitney Young. Um, damn, I forgot. This is bringing back so many memories though. But it's really dope. But that kind of like started the foundation for me to really be involved in like entertainment. Um, just helping my friends promote like whatever they were doing video wise dancing like all of that stuff I love to be in the mix on the professional side and just seeing how things operated how people got shows uh interviews just all type of media related things that can help you know like opportunities to help their career so that was like how I first got started with the Chicago dance scene when the jerking movement and like all of that stuff was really hot here then um the music, the music that all that ties into the entertainment because, uh, like I said, my sophomore year, junior year, sophomore junior year ish, uh, I met one of my best friends, my sister, Hannah got raps. Y'all go follow her and check her out. Uh, she was doing her thing there, and um, there was a contest that was going on at our school. It was called Get Schooled, mm-hmm. and it was basically like. Um, you have to rap about education. It was like a nationwide thing. Um, you have to rap about education and people had to vote for your video and um, different stuff like that. And I remember like the grand prize was um, <clears throat> the grand part. The grand prize was if you won, you would have like Nicki Minaj or like DJ Khaled be like your uh, what was it like? Pre- I was going to say president. You can edit this. Yeah. Uh, they would be like your principal for a week kind of thing. Wait, what do you mean? Like they're not going to come to yeah, your school? Yeah, yes, they would come to your. You they got to come to your school. Yeah, I think it was you won. You won a fifty thousand dollar check for your school. Uh huh. And then uh, Nicki Minaj or someone on that caliber at the time. I think it was Nicki Minaj. Uh-huh. She uh, would come to your school and be your principal for the week. So like everyone was like going crazy. Um, I seen dope. Hannah. Yeah, I seen Hannah had just dropped like a video to it, and I don't know. It was just like it clicked. Like, I was just going in, just promoting that video, getting people to watch it, share it, just all of that stuff. And then that is what I feel like turned our relationship into this familyhood that we have now to to this day. Dude, that's dope. Okay, so we're going to fast forward then a little bit. When you got out of high school, I know that you said that you didn't know if you wanted to go into college right away. Yeah. And if you wanted to move out the state. Yeah. Which... You said you went to L.A. for a little while, fell yeah. in love with it, yeah. fell in love with the scene, the hip-hop scene. Yeah. What was more of that about, you know? Um, so at that time, yeah, like between 2012, 2013, Chicago was really like 
bad at the time. It was a lot of violence going on in the city. Um, a lot of people dying, a lot of friends dying. And it was just like one of those things where it was like, okay, the summer's about to come. I don't have a plan. I don't have a job. Uh, yeah, I just finished school. Do I want to hop directly back into school? But I feel like that was the only like gateway to be safe was to constantly be busy doing something proactive. And then while I was from, it was just like, okay, everything was so outside of the neighborhood that it was just so dragging to be like, oh, every day I'm going to get up and just see myself going to this job every day for the summer. And it was just like, I, it wasn't for me. I'm going to be honest. Like, I just didn't feel like that energy was for me because it was so like, it, it put you in a, like a, a stuck place. It, it was like a stuck energy that just made you get up, go to work, come home, do the same thing. And I was just like, I know I'm more than that. I know I can do more than this. I'm destined for something bigger than this. And then I remember um, Hannah had went out to L.A. I had went to go visit her that summer. And uh, it was BT Awards weekend, which was crazy. And that summer changed my life. Like, I, I met so many amazing people. Like, I was in the mix. I met a lot of uh, big people, De like Deborah Lee, the owner of BT, um, Just Blaze. Like, <laughs> it was just crazy. Like, Casey Veggies. Like, just all of these cool, random, like, people that you would see, like, on TV all the time. And then we're here, like, in the mix, doing stuff with them at events, at shows, even like uh, Fat Lip from the far side, like just seeing him DJ and learning more about the West Coast history from Delicious Vinyl, like his label and that era of them bringing up like Jay Dilla and like those type of people. So it was like being in the mix, being so young and seeing that and being around those people, I just knew it was like something there for me. And I was always going into like these... Um, <clears throat> situations with a, a clear mindset on learning and just trying to adapt to see like how these people move and do so much cool shit you know what's actually cool though too because you're half black and half mexican i didn't yeah. get touched like not like that let me rephrase that i didn't get <laughs> i didn't get really like in tune with my yeah. culture maybe till 2020 20, 21 yeah. so i didn't really hear like reggaeton i didn't really hear corridos tumbaos yeah so what made you like go into like the hip hop scene and the rap scene instead of like going for the you know Mexico region of music, you know I don't know if you've experimented with that type of music, paid attention to it, you know. I think it was always there. I just didn't acknowledge it. Like I was mm. more so um, acknowledging what I was already hearing from the radio or my friends or just being around them because a lot of people don't know this like. I was never a kid that wanted to get involved in doing anything music related. Like I was a super nerd. Um, I love animals. Like I wanted to be a zoologist or a veterinarian. Um, yeah, even my parents would tell you like, yeah, this kid used to always rescue animals, bring them home. <laughs> but we would go fishing and catch like this crazy, I remember we caught this crazy like alligator snapping turtle, brought it home. My mom freaked out. But I was just always like, thrilled by nature i was always thrilled by just mm. different animals and i knew about them and i could tell you about them birds like parrots like just all just type of animals i was just fascinated by that since i was a kid so which kind of explains why you use the bee as your logo right yeah okay. definitely definitely all right um catch you too like bees because they sting you but okay okay <laughs> but, you know shout out to the bees but um yeah i just always was very in tune with nature and just animals in general. And that was my interest. And then, uh, like I said, I couldn't tell you a record that had came out that was popping unless it was like a big name like Eminem or mm -hmm. someone like that that we already knew. So it would be like people would always, I would always be in the mix when people would be like, oh yeah, this person just dropped this new song or like, did you hear this? And in my mind, I'd be like, how are you all finding this to like know about it? How do you like, what is the stories? How are you guys getting this TMZ information so fast? And I'm just this kid like outside, love being outside on my bike, riding on the block, like just doing me, not even paying attention to that. And then it's so funny because like now I'm doing all of that. Dude, that's that's <laughs> 2024, nuts. like I could, 
I could now be up to date with what's coming out or what's new or finding new music. But there was a period of time I was just like, didn't understand how people was doing that because it wasn't, I feel like, a interest for me because I was so focused on just being active and being outside and just riding my bike and being with, like I said, being with nature, going to the park, like just doing, climbing trees, like just, I was a wild kid. So I was always, I had so much energy. So I was always into something. That's nuts. Yeah. But also too, as well, something that actually stuck out to me, that was actually <clears> pretty cool. You've been doing this for 10 years, right? More than 10 Jeez, years, this, right? Yeah. This will be like the 11th going into 12. So uh, yeah. So like Crazy. The, the first couple of years, you said you were kind of on it. You were iffy just because you were yeah. trying to figure out some stuff like school wise, if you're going to stay yeah. here, what do we all face? Right. Yeah. But, um, I think you've mentioned also to the past two years, you've also been now like getting that motivation again, yeah. that discipline, that hunger yeah. in you. Yeah. Um, and now you're. Dude, like the past two weeks, I think we've just been posting back to back to back to <laughs> yeah, back. Yeah, we've been we've been going crazy, and I love it because it's like fueling me. Because I know the purpose has always been there. It's just God's timing for me is everything, and I'm starting to learn how. I'm starting to learn what that means for me. I'm starting to like take action. I'm starting to sit in that process and really understand like what that means for me. Like everyone's so caught up in the cloud or just trying to make a name for themselves but I would rather be someone that start from ground zero and keep building my way up until whatever happens and know that along that journey and that path that I was able to meet so many amazing people and just grow and develop so many cool relationships with people so when I get to that point it's like everyone feels like they've been a part of the journey with me mm -hmm. so it's like you're building community at the same time and you're building yourself like people like i said people watch and pay attention so it's just like you might not feel like you're doing anything but you're doing a lot like you're doing you're definitely doing a lot like people definitely pay attention people definitely watch so i think like the greatest advice that i received and this is crazy this was last year um shout out to fat lip <coughs> from the far side uh, he basically dropped like a gym and he was like every day, like literally just every day, even if it's just one thing towards your goal that you're doing content wise, anything like that you're putting your foot forward for like that's that's going to take over all the time. Like mm -hmm. people are going to see that even if you like I said, just put one thing out a day, if you put three things out a day, that's that's even better. But every day every day you get up and do it like if it's your hunger your passion your dream and you want to do that you got to do it because at the end of the day no one else is going to do it for you mm -hmm. so it's like how do you how do you still find that strength that motivation and then all of that to just like keep going when you don't have no one else in your corner and you still have to wake up and do life, and then do school, and then work, and then, you know what I mean? Like, Well, that's a good a question. Lot. That's Definitely a, good, a lot. That's a good question to actually ask. Like, actually, a lot of people, <clears throat> I feel like they ask themselves, why do I keep doing this for what? I mean, like, end of the day, it's the vision and what you want yeah. to achieve and end of your goals. Like, there was this video that I saw where Terry Crews, like, I don't know if you're familiar with Terry Crews. Yeah, 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 yeah that's a funny guy. OG, <laughs> he said when he was broke, it took him a couple years before he got his big hit with um, Cat Williams or whatever. Yeah. He said every job he did, because after post-NFL, his career died with the NFL for a couple seasons, he was sweeping floors. And he yeah. said, why am I in this position? Yeah. He said in an interview, he said, ever since I started questioning and started taking this serious, every job I've taken, I would pretend that I yeah. was going to get paid a million dollars yeah. each shift. So if I'm going to sweep floors, I'm going to be the best at it. If yeah. I'm going to do this, I'm going to be the absolute yeah. best. So like, even though you think no one's watching, like you said, or you mentioned, yeah. someone's met, someone's watching. Yeah, definitely, that. definitely. And that's funny that you mentioned that because um, I was reading DJ Khaled's The Keys book. Uh, Shout out to DJ Khaled. If you have not checked out The Keys book, please go check it out. It was one chapter where he was talking about like how he was um <clears throat> it was like one chapter he was talking about how he had just got started and like all the opportunities that he was getting might have not been the biggest opportunities but even the smallest he made it seem like it was the biggest opportunity ever. Mm -hmm. So like I feel like I connected with that because sometimes I used to be like, "Oh, you know, like this is okay. Like I don't mind doing this because, you know, it's something 
But then, like, when I when I read that book and I start understanding how, like, the smallest thing could be, like, the most impactful. Mm-hmm. And I, I was just, like, relating myself to literally how he was showing up every day just going to see what it was about or just even taking the extra step to just be available. Mm-hmm. Even when people were available and not available, just still showing your face like, hey, I'm here. If you need me, I'll help. I'm here. Like, anything I'll do. So just taking, like, that that drive and that mindset and then like applying that like i just like any small opportunity big opportunity crazy opportunity like just make the best of it make the biggest out of it and enjoy it well that's the thing people forget too man like people don't want to do freelance Mm -hmm. and people forget dude those are like that's like the part of the process for the outcome and you know for the come up that's like that's like one of the other keys too like you know everyone is not handed a silver platter so it's like yeah you can you can you can really clout your way up to the top if you really want to go that way, but it's like, come on, you want to be authentic. You want to be around 10 years from now. You don't want to just be a moment person, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? You don't want to just yeah. be in the moment. And I, I think that's, like, really big for me because, like, being around, like, a lot of older hip-hop heads in the game and just, like, sitting there and just, like, soaking up how they move and how they do certain things business-wise or how they work in the studio or how they work with different artists. Like, I just sat there and I I embraced those moments because it was just like, wow, okay, this is how really they do this. And it's it's all just a process, basically. It's part of the journey, man. People want to skip. You can't skip those processes. You can't. And those are the best moments, too, best memories. Exactly. You learn so much about yourself. You grow. Like, this is not just a moment thing. Like, it's a mind, body, soul Mm -hmm. I want to say cleanse, but enhancement of what you're supposed to be doing or who you are in the future. A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm telling you 10 years, well, no one can really give you any type of advice. <laughs> 10 years, man. Even man. if it was kind of on and off, you still did 10 years and networked. So I was going to say, you did mention during the, like, maybe this was 10, 12 years ago. That was cool. I think, was it you that you were in touch with famous decks or something along those lines? No, no, no. So, um, let me give you a little backstory too about this because I don't think I ever told you this. So, I think a lot of I don't think a lot of people know this. So I, I'm I'm this is like breaking news for everyone. This is really cool. Let's hear it. Sixteen, seventeen years old. Um, I had got my first internship and it was working with um one of Akon's artists um at the time uh with Convict Music and Def Jam. His name was okay. Bert Simmons. Shout out to Big Bro. Like he gave me an opportunity to like work on his team being a social media marketing guy uh, for a couple years. And that kind of like really what got me into the business side of everything, like just learning how to promote a tour, um, a media run, just like different, just different stuff like you, that you wouldn't see like from the people behind the scenes all the time. I'm so grateful that I've had the opportunity to like do that with him for a couple years and that they seen something in me to pick me being the only one from Chicago. And they were based all in Atlanta. Mm. So it was just like crazy that, you know, I got accepted doing that and was working with him do that for like a couple years, like three or four years. And then that turned into like still like a cool relationship that we have to this day. Like I I, can, I consider him still as a big bro. And then uh, shout out to Dave. Shout out to Biddy Barnes. Um Shout out to Dave, too. Dave is uh, now the vice president of United Masters. Mm. So it's just crazy that, I, you know, like he was on the team when I was a part of this when I was 17. That's so this nuts. Is, yeah, this is nuts. And now this man is like the vice president. If you work hard and you continue to just put in the grind or just network and be a good person and be genuine, like God will open doors for you that you just don't understand. Those are facts. Dude. <laughs> I can't understand. I can't explain it. Well, dude, when we're around campus and I just see people, how they approach you, it's like yeah. you have that respect already, right? So <laughs> yeah. So when I see that, I'm just like, okay, like, dang, this is actually cool. But on top of that, to piggyback right what you said with being genuine and all that, and something I like about you too as well, it's like you're discovering these artists before they blow up. Yeah. Like you have an eye for this. Yeah, that's just crazy. Like, um, there will be a lot of friends that live out of town and or in the city. And we'll have conversation. I'll be like, yo, this person's from your city. Like, you got to reach out to them, work with mm-hmm. them. And they'll be like, okay, let me see what they're about. And then it's crazy because then, like, 
months later, this this artist is like touring the world or yeah. blew up, and I'm just like, wow, that's crazy that I got a chance to like interact and be involved in their space, and for them to accept me and like have this cool friendship and bond just off the our relationship of conversation that's like forming this friendship for years to come after this is like nuts to me Mm -hmm. yeah it opens doors bro definitely does definitely does so with that um the opening the doors part when you keep on grinding and networking too what's in your head process that you want to achieve though long term because you said you want this to be to outlive you to build mm. something or build an empire that's like what we're having in talks like yeah. dude we, we're trying to make the scene in yeah. the city yeah definitely but what's your long-term goal then i feel like my purpose with all of this and i'm gonna keep it 100 is to show someone that doesn't have the confidence or doesn't have the imaginary mindset of it like out like of outstepping their boundaries to see the world and do amazing things and meet people like i want to be that person to be like, oh, you know, he came from my hood or like he's normal just like me and he was able to do all these big things that he's doing now and it's a possibility that I could do the same and it's hope. Like it gives people hope that it don't matter where you come from. Like as long as if you put it in the grind, you're a good person, you do good things, like it, it'll come back 10 times running over for you. Just like when you said you met you met Donny Khans ten years ago. Yeah, shout out to my boy Donny Khans. Like, um, and met, reconnected with him literally at this event two yeah. weeks ago. So it's so crazy because like I haven't been to a Reggie's Rock Club <laughs> in almost like ten years, and it was just crazy because he had a show. I think it was uh, I was there last. It was like with Saint Millie. I think it was Saba, um, Logan. So it was just it was like a crazy lineup. And then for me to have not been in that building until literally last week, it's so crazy that, you know, like him reaching out to see if I had an artist that wanted to be involved in something that he was putting together at the same location 10 years ago when I was in the space watching him perform. Hmm. I just thought it was like the coolest thing ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And your your artist that you're right now, he's cool. He's so cool. So dope. Java, right? Yeah. So, um... I'm currently working with Jabba. Um, I'm managing 95 Goldie. Shout out to my boy 95 Goldie. And then uh, I'm also helping my sister Hannah with anything she got. Like, okay. I don't I don't categorize myself as a manager or anything like that. Like I don't like that word. Like I love being an advocate. I love being uh, like a motivator for someone yeah. to see their potential. So I will basically just say that I love being an advocate. Well, that's why when I put up that reel, you're always seen behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then when you're actually on camera, yeah, you know, it's another story where, you know, people are actually starting to recognize like, yo, AJ, you're yeah. here on camera, bro. What's up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like a lot of people have been wanting to see me do more content on camera. And uh-huh. I just, I don't know. I'm just so used to the norm of just like being behind the scenes, making sure everything's good, uh-huh. um, interacting, networking and stuff like that. And just grinding that way uh there's nothing wrong with that yeah there's definitely nothing wrong with like nothing wrong with that like i feel like i move better when i'm just like in that space i'm not involved but involved like if that makes sense i already i think we're doing amazing now like it's so cool to be able to like pick different people's perspectives about different situations from all, all age range kind of ideal thing um i'll be 30 so I'm glad I'm doing this now because I wouldn't be able to do this in the 20s podcast because I'll be 30, obviously. A lot of people don't know that, which is funny. Yeah. Um, yes, I just I just think just continuing building communities, continue having conversation, continue supporting artists, continue just showcasing the craft and the work is like the most important thing to me. Like you can find an artist that does the same type of music and can be like this really amazing artist, but if they don't have a platform or they don't have someone like rooting for them, like I feel like it's very hard for their confidence and motivation to like continue. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I was always that person like, yeah, I had people that was rooting for me. I had people that was always in my corner, like telling me to do good and stuff like that. So I feel like I have to be that person. Like it's, I feel like I'm appointed to be that person to do that for other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, 
it's like fueling someone else's fire, but for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their fire is already lit, but it's like, how can we make it explode? You know what I mean? Like, okay. it's already there, but it's like, how do we take that and make it bigger? Or like, yeah. So I like that too, because like, <clears throat> how I'd see it is that you're more on the music aspect, right? Yeah. For like, in your 20s, it's more of like, we'll interview anyone, right? Yeah. Um, and I like how, you know, it's like bread and butter. Why? Because yeah. you go to these events yeah, and then you'll handle, you know, like you said, like the managing event, like uh management side. Yeah. I'll take care of all the interviews. Yeah. Right. And it will merge it, edit all this stuff. Yeah. Right. It opens more doors. Yeah. But also spreads more, f you know, promotions. To yeah, us. definitely. Definitely. It definitely does. And it also it it shows the community that you care too, like you know what I mean. Like you're taking the time out to just shine light on someone for what they do mm -hmm. or how they think, how they feel, and it's like you're giving them like a way to express that through media. Mm -hmm. So like I think that's like very important because we're in the day and age where the internet is like everything. Mm -hmm. Once our phone has no internet everyone's freaking out yeah so it's like i think that's like really big nowadays just providing an opportunity for people that don't really get opportunities that's been working their ass off and trying to get opportunity mm -hmm. yeah being the void between the norm of giving opportunities and people that's just like picking people to give opportunities to well if the internet does cut off one day which <laughs> could yeah dude, we're gonna be going on the streets giving out cds <laughs> yeah, bro back to the cassette benchmark promotions yes selling Shoot. cds out the trunk CDs, pulling up in the bro. back of the pickup truck doing shows like no nah, dude it's crazy but uh <laughs> yeah. it, i don't know like dude the next six months can like you know one we just need one video yeah. and your life changes just like that yeah um, no, nah, dude, we have great stuff going along, uh, great stuff coming too as well. Like I said, we're going to have to cut this short, mm -hmm. but, um, any last things that you want to say, anything, last things you want to mention? So forever grateful to have the opportunity to work with Ver Simmons. Um, he's an amazing singer, songwriter, and producer. He has a lot of hit records. Um, he's wrote for like Rihanna, Chris Brown, uh, a lot of amazing people. That's so to be able to be a part of that team and then like I said working with Dave who's the vice president now of United Masters 10 years ago it's just like mind blowing to me and then uh, to be a part of Sci High's team and just like helping him put together his tour promoting all his music um, just a major blessing major blessing definitely build my relationships a little bit stronger and it got me to like really test myself to be out here to network more and then break out of my shell talking to people and just get familiar with the industry i love that you have to be uncomfortable to grow in order to grow yeah. man that's just a fact dude, yeah thank you so much aj for sharing your story dude. yes sir we're gonna still be doing more interviews together we're still gonna yes, be collabing sir. more so stay in tune for that because we got a ton of videos yes sir so like you said people be watching start liking man <laughs> start liking and reposting because i know you're watching yeah, i know you're watching like comment share repost everything we have a lot of amazing amazing stuff coming soon for you all